Okay. Seems like every week I have issues trying to get this thing set up on Facebook. There's so many buttons and things I need to press and it's like I need a PhD in order to figure this out. Um, okay, so I want to make sure I see comments. So I'm going to kind of adjust my screen so that I can see the comments down there. And then um, I can see what you see on my screen up here. Hopefully that will work. Let me pull it back down. Hi, Andy. My cousin's on. Uh, okay. On Facebook land, hopefully this, you can see this. Okay. And then Instagram land. Hi, Diane. And Tiki Paints. I don't know how, uh, what her first name is, but hi, I'm so happy you're there. Um, okay. You can join either on Facebook or Instagram. Doesn't matter. I uh, figured I'd try to do both every time I do this so that whoever, you know, prefers which one they can tune into whatever. Um, at the end of the live, I save the feed from the Facebook side because you can do that there. And then I post to my YouTube channel, which if you search Lenihan Studios, you should be able to find it. Um, and these finishes, for those of you that are brand new or tuning in later, um, they're tuned to anybody who is either just starting out or has something that they're trying to figure out for a job or just curious. So anybody with any skill level can um, tune in um, and learn something. Um, you know, Diane is a wonderfully talented, experienced design, uh, finished designer. And, um, you know, she doesn't need to be here, but it's sweet that she's here to support me. Um, and maybe she'll learn something, who knows? Um, so what I am planning to demonstrate this evening for you all is a finish that I developed based on a Philip Jeffries wallpaper. And I don't have the sample of the wallpaper with me. I had to return it to the client. Um, but if you were following me on Instagram or Facebook, you saw the photo that I had posted of the grass cloth finish. It's an off white, kind of like a, light grayy, beigey gray, and then it has little flecks of brown um, throughout. So it looks very natural. And um, I did this finish for a client in North Baltimore County um, whose decor is very um, neutral centric, but she layers with a lot of textures and she likes the wallpaper, but it wasn't quite the right color. And as a fellow decorative finisher, you probably have run into that problem where a client or a designer has come to you and said, I like this, but how can we adjust this to fit exactly with the decor that my client needs? And so in this case, the room was very large and the texture got lost on the wall because it was so fine. And so we decided to make it a little bit more bold and enhance the brown flecks. So this is the first sample that I created for her. So I'm gonna hold it up to Instagram first so that you can see. I mean, this is a typical plaster grass cloth finish for anybody who's been in the field over to Instagram here. And you can see the little brown flecks. So if you had tuned in to my glacier finish, the one that I had done for Golden Paintworks with like the kind of seafoam green landscapey kind of um, finish, I did that finish. It's almost identical to this, except I tinted the material to a um, green color. And I think I probably used a different um, set of materials. In this case, I used, um, and Pardon me, but I get really frustrated when um, decorative painting companies uh, decide to change their names or discontinue formulas. Um, I originally created this finish with, um, it was called Proceed by Golden's rough, regular texture and their um, smooth light body texture. Um, or something to that effect. Now they called it soapstone and fresco, but then when I was um, going to purchase material for this job, I realized that fresco had been discontinued. 
Um, so in a panic, I bought a similar product from Full Effects that is um, the same texture. But what I like about Golden's material is that they don't put a lot of titanium dioxide in their material so that you can tint it to a very deep color. And my cat has decided to join me. Timmy, Tim, come on, come here. Timmy, come here. Oh, he's being a butthead. He, this is his first time in my studio. I try to keep it closed off from the animals so that I don't get pet hair and everything. But it's a beautiful night and I figured I'd allow him to come in. So anyway, um, this is the finish that we created and the, the client um, approved. So this is a lot more textural. And I hope you can see with the lighting over here. Now, Sharon requested to be do you request. I don't know if I can do this. Sharon, I don't know what you did. Um, I don't I can't view it right now, so I apologize, but hopefully you can hear me um, and see what I'm doing. So over here on Facebook. So to achieve these different textures, um, again, if you had tuned into the glacier finish, what we did was we used a chip brush to essentially create all of our texture. So, um, by the way, even though it's Monday, I'm drinking because, you know, it, it's been a day. So cheers. Um, so this is my leftover 50% 50 per, 50 fresco and 50% soapstone mixture. And I added just a little bit of water to it just to extend it. And I basically just apply it with a chip brush. And like I've said before, chip brushes are my tool of choice. They're cheap, they're plentiful, and they work for so many different um, Okay, just checking to see if there's any comments on Facebook. Okay, so if you're gonna be using the golden material because it doesn't have a lot of titanium dioxide in it, the base coat matters. So in this case, the client had, um, I believe it was Benjamin Moore Simply White, and so that's what I used on the project and then put this material over it untinted. So this is the untinted material. You can see it's just in a white color, but when you put it on the wall, it is translucent. So the base coat will project through the final coat. So if you are um, doing this finish and you want to change the color, pick a base coat that is comparable to whatever color you're doing the plaster with. And also make sure that it's a satin finish. Um, that way the plaster doesn't grab and absorb and dry too quickly. Um, the golden material uh, is really good to work with. It stays uh, smooth and open for a long time. Other plasters can um, dry fairly quickly. If that's the case, you can always add glaze to it, um, water-based glaze, and you know create a little bit more open time for you. Keep in mind though that will thin the plaster so you will see the base coat through. So first step, you can either go vertical or horizontal for your first step, it doesn't matter. Um, I have a habit of going vertical. So I just put on a um, generous amount, work it across so that it's very even. And you may not see anything at this point on the screen because it's white on white. And again, we're not really seeing much texture because I'm using the chip brush. So I'm going to keep working across, laying on my first layer. While I was doing this, I had kind of a, I don't know if um, when you're working on a project and you're doing a finish, you kind of have a creative brain fart. I like to call them brain farts because sometimes they're great, sometimes they're just not. Um, about doing a, uh, a textural finish like this but in like a geometric pattern where I tape off areas so I might experiment with that um, later on when I have some time and come back and show you what I have so I have the board covered and if you have little dry chunks I don't know if you can see where you are um, the dry chunks are actually okay because they add to the nubbiness 
effect of the grass cloth. So once I'm done with that, then I'm going to take what I've been told is called a corduroy tool. So this one was given to me by my friend Annie Lemarier, and I bought this one. I'm going to take the plastic wrap off of it. This one I bought from Chris Burke from Comey Trowels. I think I have it upside down. There you go. Comey Trowels. Um, it's like an AstroTurf type uh, texture, but a little bit more uh, rigid and stiff. And it's really fun. You have, you can see I used this earlier when I was preparing the boards for today. Um, you basically just drag it through and as the plaster builds up in the tool, it creates that nubbiness effect and real thick texture. And when you're working on a large surface, what I figured out was because this can take a lot of material off the wall, you can actually redistribute the material on a space that you know, you're working towards to remove some of the stuff from your tool. And then you can re strie through it. And actually that adds a little bit more texture to your surface as well. Okay. So once you get it straight, then you would let this layer dry. Um, if you're a little kind of wonky and your lines aren't quite straight right now my lines aren't very straight you can always set up a laser level and just project that across the wall so you can have a guideline to follow so that you can make sure that your lines aren't going like diagonal as you move along so let me just go to work through this a little bit longer and i'm pretty much using the tip you can see where the material is coming off I can work from bottom to top. Um, the other thing I noticed that when I work in a corner with this tool, because it's fairly bulky, um, maybe they make a, a corner tool, I don't know, but I would take it and I would rock it as I got to the corner. And that way I didn't leave, like if I were to just lift off, if I switch to the corner and I lift off, you could see these little like speckle marks. So I would take it and then I would start to angle it towards the corner. That way you have a more smooth transition. So that's what you would do for the first layer. Very simple and straightforward, let it dry. Um, I'm gonna move this aside and through the magic of TV or pre-planning in, in my case, I have a second board that's already ready to go. Um, if you want, one of the things that I do, my paint store thinks I'm always crazy. Um, I, if I'm tinting a plaster to a specific color, say a designer or a client says, I want this to match Benjamin Moore 2335. I have no idea what color that is. What I would do is go to my local paint store. Typically I go to Sherwin Williams, but a new Benjamin Moore distributor opened up down the street and um, they're great. So I bring a container, an empty like, you know, quart or gallon can, depending on how much tint I need. And I say to them, can you fill this with a, you know, if you're doing a small project or a sample, you could do like a quart's worth or a gallon's worth of tint in you know uh, either a light base or a deep base doesn't matter you know it's just basically what how much tint you're going to have and then what i do is i take a stir stick mix it up and then i put a little bit of that tint into the plaster so i'm not reinventing the wheel by tinting that on my own using my acrylic colors or colorants or mix -alls or anything like that that'll get me to whatever color I'm trying to achieve. And then with those additional tools, the mix alls, the acrylic colors, I can adjust that as needed to get the exact color that I need. That, you know, saves you time on, you know, trying to order it from someplace that will tint it for you 
or um, taking your gallon and trying to take it to the paint store and have them tint it. I've never tried that. I have no idea if that, you know, people look at artists like us, like we're crazy. Um, but I feel like um, I get like a little thing of tint and it lasts a really long time. So um, that's some a trick that I've done for, for years. So I haven't really had any issues with it, with the tint drying or the color has been straight on um accurate um again and that's why i like to use the um golden material the the what is it called now um golden paint works because again they don't have as much titanium dioxide so you can get a truer color from their products if you use a different product it might turn out a little bit more chalky so good luck to that <laughs> anyway all right so this is the first layer it's dry and if i show this to you up close you can kind of see how the color dries over top of the base coat so this board i recycled i had a very dark dark mahogany brown finish on here and i rolled two coats of just an off white or i'm sorry just a, a white untinted and you can see how the finish dries a little a little beigey so again this is the material not the color so you can tint it to whatever color you want all right so the second step same as the first um, chip brush again this time go across and sometimes um, I when I was doing this job to get so my shoulder was getting tired um, I would drag it vertically just to get it into all of the crevices and then I would drag my brush across horizontally so that there was 100% coverage. So work your way down the board and if you're doing this on a large surface, a large wall, there's no need to rush across the wall. You're not going to have lap lines. You're not going to pull the material off. This stuff is amazing to work with and the technique that I showed you before so if you're going across and you're pulling that finish, creating that texture. And this, this tool really gives me the look of a woven grass cloth. I was really surprised when I first did it. It was really interesting to see because you can see that first layer and looking closely, it has a really nice weave effect. So you can see now I'm starting to really build up a lot of excess material. So what I'm going to do is down here where I need to add more material. You can see how much I just released from my tool. And then I can come in with some more from the bucket, work that across. And again, dried up boogers don't matter. They add to the nubby effect of the grass cloth. At least in my case, if you don't like it, if you want it slightly refined, um, you can take pick them out if you want to, but I can't be bothered. So just working across, working it into the crevices and the grooves. And then I'll take my tool again, drag it across. And it's also good to go in both directions because this will pull the material from whatever you're placing it on across. So just to make sure that each surface is evenly distributed. And I'm going off the edge. If this is a corner, I would start picking up my tool, turning it, and letting it end. Or I would start in the corner like this, and then drag, and then land the airplane, so to speak. I think that was a Gary Lord reference. And then continue across. Okay, so then last little bit here. Did I see Gert Jan join? Hi. <laughs> Hello from the Netherlands. I hope you're joining us in Salon this year. All right, last little bit. And voila. 
So to wash this thing, I soak it in water a little bit after I kind of scrape off the excess and it washes out really easily. So I'm gonna set that down along with my tip brush to wash later. And I'm gonna take this off and this will be set aside to dry or put into my little drying oven. Put this right here. You guys wanna meet my cat? This is my fat boy, Timmy. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. This is Timmy Tim, or as Evan calls him, Timoteo. He's not sure. But anyway, he's my old boy. All right. So now that we have a finished board, that one's wet. I just put my fingers in it. Where did I put my wet board? Oh, here's my dry board. Okay. This is the one that I finished earlier today. You can see it has that really thick depth of texture. Now what we're going to add is the, the speckling and glazing. And this kind of took me a little bit of practice to get the hang of. Um, if you look at the sample that I have, it's very subtle, but it adds a little bit of an organic detail, which I quite like. I don't know if you guys can see that over there. Okay, let me see if I have any questions on. Ah, Sherry Bacon Culpepper, watching from Atlanta, woo! Okay, um, Sharon says there's no sound on Instagram. That's weird, I'm sorry. Um, Anchi Chenoweth, hi, cute kitty. Okay, um, what products are you using? I recently did a room with soft text. Okay, so to answer, um, Anji Chenoweth's question. Um, I mentioned soft text in the beginning. What I'm using is um, Golden's Paintworks products um, using soapstone and their discontinued fresco texture. Um, so if I were to be doing this project again, say next week, I would have to substitute soapstone for their fresco. Soapstone, I'm sorry, um, soft text. Soft text by Faux Effects. Um, the only um, drawback is that Faux Effects uses more titanium white in their material. So if you're tinting this product, you're gonna have to be a little bit more judicial in trying to get that color to what you want. Um, Golden, I know, is going to be bringing back some of their textures that they've discontinued, their rough regular texture. I forget what, what evolution that was, um, which it makes me happy because I just, I loved how versatile their textures were. So um, yeah, so this is dry and the flicking technique, you could use this, I think I learned this originally when I was doing a marbling class somewhere and my trusty chip brushes. So you're gonna need two chip brushes. Um, this one I taped because um, this is the one I used on the job. And as I was whacking it, the little nails started popping out. So, um, but, the length of the bristle works well for me. Um, so what I do, this is the glaze that I've mixed up and this is Golden Paintworks um, Sheer Glazing Medium, also known as their low viscosity glaze, um, if you're familiar with the Proceed line. And I tinted it with um, raw umber, burnt, no, uh, raw sienna, um, you can kind of see it's more of just like a, a medium chocolate brown color. So it's not as dark as, um, you know, Van Dyke brown or a true raw umber. It's a little bit more um, chocolatey brown. And I tinted it with a little bit of Mixol and a little bit of the Golden Proceed, I'm sorry, Paintworks um, Slow Dry fluid, fluid Acrylics. So what I do is I put a little bit of material on the tip of my brush and I wipe it off and the first couple of times you want to kind of suss out how much material is going to flick off your brush because if you if it goes crazy it'll be a lot um, but you can always take a damp rag and wipe it right off and you'll have time to do that if you have um, 
too much on there you can just take and that's what I did sometimes I got a little you know extra and I took a rag wiped it back couldn't even tell the difference so with my chip brush loaded I take the handle of my opposite chip brush and I just whack it and I'll hold this up to the screen so that you can see how much I'm putting on okay there's one final step after this but I want you to see this before I do the final step so you can see how I speckled it you could leave it just like this if you wanted to but the wallpaper sample the Philip Jeffries sample that the client really liked um, these were almost like um, naturally occurring um, stains or um, maybe tannins in the grass that they use to make the wallpaper so I used the bristle side of the chip brush that I just used the handle for and I just lightly come across and I brush horizontally across to blend that in and make that feel like it's embedded into the fibers of the grass cloth. So I'm using the tips of my brush to get anything that I can't reach with this pressure, some that are kind of hiding in the little crevices there. And then if you feel like you had too much on there, you can always take a, a damp rag. This is dry, but if it was damp, you can just go in and just wipe out some areas that might be too much. And that's it. So the project that I did, um, it's on my Instagram and the client is actually having it photographed because she's um, starting a new business um, doing interior design. The room was fairly large and I worked by myself and it took me um, three and a half days to complete. So it's a fairly quick finish, um, a lot of um, interest and texture. Um, I'd love to see it if you guys did this yourself. I love this tool if you're just tuning in. This is the corduroy tool. Um, this one Annie Lemaire gave to me. Um, the other one that I used, um, I bought from Chris Burke, um, who is located in Northern Virginia. So, hi Evan. Um, so with that, that's all so if you have any questions if you couldn't join me i'll be posting this to my youtube channel uh if you go to youtube and you search lenahan studios i'll be putting this up there by tomorrow and i'll be back next month which is november already um, and then december will be the last one for a while because i'm having surgery on this old shoulder here so anyway Thank you guys for uh, coming and spending some time with me virtually and have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye.